السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and may he bless them all and may he bless his entire household may he bless all those who have struggled and strived to protect the deen to learn it to practice upon it to convey it to others in a way that it has come to us wallahi my beloved brothers and sisters it is a gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve the knowledge of islam because the difference between us and the others is we do not accept hearsay we need that which is sound knowledge we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who can sacrifice at least a little bit of time to learn the deed and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and to grant us every form of goodness we saw the greatest migration or hijrah in history in fact it is the only one worth making mention of and by the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Quba, a new chapter commenced. What was the chapter? Now revelation had became known as Al-Madani, that which was revealed in Medina Munawwara, that which was revealed after the Hijrah. Up to that stage, revelation was known as Al-Makki. If you look at the surahs of the Quran, it says surat so and so, Makkiyya. Surat so and so, Madaniya. Did you know that the most of the surahs were already revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah? Only 23 surahs were revealed in Medina Munawwara. Although some of them were long, like Surah Baqarah and Ali Imran and so on, which were revealed in Medina Munawwara, they were quite long. But the number of surahs, the bulk of them were already revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah. And they were discussing the topic of. Tawheed, meaning the oneness of Allah, protecting ourselves from associating any form of uh, deity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any God with Allah. So that was the core subject that was discussed in the verses that were revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah. Also, as we've explained before, what is known as Imaniyat, belief, belief in life after death, belief in heaven and hell, Jannah and Jahannam and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us strength and to make us from those who are solid believers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who appreciate the fact that we are the members of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Hijrah calendar had commenced. Now, one might ask a question, did they start counting from that point? The answer is no. At the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, later on, after the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu started recording dates, he decided that it should be commenced from the Hijrah. And this was the decision made by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Now, we learned yesterday that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in Quba on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, and it was a Monday according to some of the narrations. And according to the Christian calendar, it was approximately the 20th of September 622 AD. Approximately the 20th of September 622 AD. So the calendar had started with the first month being Muharram. Why was that? Why wasn't the first month Rabi al Awwal or Rabi al Thani? The answer to that, some of the scholars have made mention of a beautiful response. Even Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani has spoken about it. That at that time, the treaty or the pledge of Aqaba, the second one, was signed in the month of Dhul Hijjah. And the first Hijrah commenced thereafter. The moon they saw after that was the moon of Muharram. So they will start counting from Muharram. So Muharram was when the Hijrah had commenced as a whole. Not necessarily just the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but all his companions at large, they had started. And by that time, the moon that was sighted was the moon of Muharram. So the calendar started from the first of Muharram. And this is why we have the months in that particular order uh, in our calendar, which is the Hijrah calendar. So this is also a point, as we said, of great importance. The reason why I took some time to mention this is because 
it is relevant to us on a day-to-day -day basis and we use this calendar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got to Quba as we made mention he had stayed in the house of Al-Kulthum ibn, ibn Al-Hidim according to one narration that was the pronunciation of the name and this man was one of the leaders of Banu Amr ibn Awf in Quba a few days later Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arrived in Quba and this is where he met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, he was left behind in order to give whatever amana and trust was entrusted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the mushriks of Mecca. And this is why he stayed back and he gave all those uh, belongings to the people whom they belonged to. And then he proceeded to al madin al munawwara and he arrived in Quba where he met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two or three nights after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had arrived. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the Ansar. The Ansar are the helpers, the people of Medina Munawwara, those who opened their homes and those who loved those who came to them. Today when we have a visitor in our home, sometimes depending on who exactly it is, we might feel for a while that, you know, this person is welcome, we are excited. And two, three days later, it becomes a bit of a burden. Allahu Akbar, it becomes a burden. Sometimes from day one, it's a burden already, especially with the hospitality of today. But there, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not just him who was welcome, every single one of the believers, the common factor was, you utter la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and so do we, you are welcome into our homes. And do you know what they did? Subhanallah. At some stage, they opened their doors, they shared their wealth, they shared their property, they shared absolutely everything and they became known as brothers. Obviously, this was a little bit later on when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few days after that arrived in al Madinah al munawwara from Quba, which was in the outskirts of Medina at the time. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved the Ansar so much that in Sahih al-Bukhari, there is a hadith which says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, Lawla al-hijrah, lakuntum ri'im min al-ansar. If it wasn't for the hijrah, I would have been a member of the ansar. Subhanallah. Which means these people, they opened their arms to Islam, unlike the people of Quraysh, who had harmed, who had caused lots of problem and so on. All this was also for a reason known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known to him. Sometimes we might pick up a point or two, but in most cases we wouldn't know what was the reasoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we surrender to it, know it or not. So this was one of the narrations mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another point that is worth noting, how many days did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spend in Quba? There are some narrations which make mention of a minimum of four days, whereas there is a maximum of 19 days. The majority of narrations say approximately two weeks. So approximately two weeks. What happened in Quba was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built a masjid. That would have taken a little bit of time, although it was not as we ended off yesterday. If you remember the question I asked right at the end about the beautification of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, the hearts of those who went to the house of Allah were beautified. But the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were simple. Nowadays, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are beautified. Are our hearts as beautiful? That's the question I ended with yesterday. And subhanallah, it is a potent question because it is the beautification of the heart that is achieved through the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will result in the solution to all our problems and difficulties. And it will drive us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us really spend some time with our own hearts, the condition of my heart. Today the difficulty is everyone's worried about the other man. He is like this, he is like that. In the process we forget about what we are and what amount of soup we are in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built this masjid known as Masjid Quba and Allah has praised this masjid in the Quran. And Allah calls it La Masjidun Ussisa ala Taqwa. That masjid which was built upon piety. The reason for it to be built, those who helped in it, and why it was built was piety. To bring people closer to Allah. 
to be a place where they could meet, where they could discuss their issues, where they could learn, where they could disseminate the knowledge they had, where they could prepare for any attack of the enemy, where they could prepare to retaliate, and at the same time, where they could pray their salah, where they could meet the messenger, where they could learn more of the Quran and the sayings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the role of the masjid. And this is why Masjid Quba was built and it became a base automatically. And thereafter, the Prophet ﷺ sent message to Medina Munawwara to the Ansar that I now intend to come to Al Madina. And then they sent delegations to pick him up basically from amongst them, some of their leaders and some of their people. And a lot of them came with some weapons because they were worried. They had encircled Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They did not want the enemy from Quraysh or the enemy from amongst the tribes who may be jealous around to harm Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for that reason, they had come and encircled him and they took him subhanallah. And this was a Friday. On a Friday, it is reported Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam departed and he started going from Quba to Medina to Munawwara. And on the way, as some of the narrations make mention, it was the time of Jumu'ah. Now, As'ad ibn Zurara, radiyallahu an, he, before Jumu'ah was made compulsory, already used to gather the Muslims on a Friday. He already used to gather the Muslims on a Friday, and they used to talk, they used to engage in ibadah and so on, read their salah. And thereafter, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was proceeding from Quba, going to Medina Munawwara, the time of that salah of Jumu'ah, came into place and he stopped at a place known as Banu Salim ibn Auf. And today, if you look at the just outside Masjid Quba, there is a little masjid known as Masjid al Jumu'ah. Some narrations say that that is where the Jumu'ah took place. One of the khutbas of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some narrations say that was his first khutbah. The first lecture ever delivered to the Ansar and the Muhajireen was at that particular point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but the wording of it is very interesting. He says, oh people, he warns them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the importance to take the leader where he says, you were like a flock without a shepherd and Allah gave you the shepherd and he's going to question you. What did you do? Did you follow or did you lead yourself astray? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us followers. And then he says, fear the punishment of hell, even if it means by a small piece of a date. Giving a charity by a piece of a date, not even a full date, a piece of a date. And if you cannot give that amount of a charity, then at least by a good word. Mention good words. And this shows us that your sadaqah and the charities that you give and I give, they have a role to play in saving myself and yourselves from hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Many people take it for granted. The one rand or one dollar, one riyal that we give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that perhaps could be a means of our savior from the fire of Jahannam. So do not belittle even a single donation in the right cause towards the poor and the needy and the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sustenance and may he make us content. May he make us people who are happy at all times. So this was a khutbah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then proceeded and progressed to al Madinah al munawwara and there, subhanallah, just try and picture the excitement. The people were so happy. Their messenger was coming. They had accepted Islam already. The bulk of them had accepted Islam already. They had heard so much about this man. First time meeting him. Imagine you hear so much about someone and they've really taught you so much. And now you're going to see them for the first time, subhanallah. The excitement, this was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest of creation. And he is moving, subhanallah. The creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are at peace with him. Starting from the clouds, to the trees, to the stones, to the animals, everything at peace with him. And he is moving with this delegation of people. And at that particular time, subhanallah, people used to climb on their roofs in order to look at what was going on. So you find the women climbing up on their roofs and the, the, the men had rushed out, the, the children had rushed out. And there is a narration in Sahih Muslim which makes mention of the young boys and the youngsters of Medina Munawwara chanting a few words. The chanting of the words, 
يا محمد يا رسول الله يا رسول الله يا محمد these words and many other words are made mention of in the books of hadith and as for the books of history and i explained yesterday the difference between the books of history and the books of hadith the books of history make mention of a song that we would all have heard being sung by some of the young boys and girls of Medina Munawwara as Tala al Badr alayna min thaniyat al Wada wajab al Shukr alayna and so on. The beautiful words, these are made mention of not in the books of Hadith, but in the books of Seerah, in the books of uh, history. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Indeed, it was the dawning of a new time in the history, not only of Medina Munawwara, but of the Muslims at large. Subhanallah. And they were so happy, everyone wanting to get a glimpse. It is reported, subhanallah, that even from amongst the Jewish tribes, the, but there were three Jewish tribes, Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir, and Banu Quraidah. They were around Medina Munawwara. They had come from the Roman Empire and from the Byzantian Empire. They had come down south and they were also informed that a messenger would come in an area described exactly as Al Madina Al Munawwara. And this is why they camped around there. They stayed there. They came. And they heard his words. Some of them tested him by asking him questions and many of their leaders accepted Islam. Many of the people, when they heard from amongst the Jewish people, many of them, when they heard, they accepted Islam. But obviously the bulk of the uh, Am, the bulk of the public of the Jews, they were waiting. They were very, very skeptical. They did not want to give in to an Arab. And they said, these are the children of Ismail. We are the children of Ishaq. Again, it went back to the ignorance and arrogance of the people of Quraysh. They did not want to accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Abu Jahl says that you see the family of this Abu Talib. They have had virtue of this and that and that and the Zamzam and now prophethood. We are not going to take it. We don't want it. We cannot give leadership to his child or his family. Subhanallah. And this is what made them deny. And this is the exact point that made the Jewish people deny Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet they were waiting for him. And they had settled in Medina Munawwara because of that. Subhanallah. And as I told you, some of their leaders, in fact, a lot of their leaders had accepted Islam. And from amongst them was Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. We made mention of his story. And I think we should repeat it. He was from amongst those. He says, when I saw the messenger as he came into Medina Munawwara, I was busy with doing something in my little garden. I left everything and I ran. I saw his face. Obviously, he got a glimpse of it. And he says, as soon as I saw him, I knew this is not the face of a liar. Subhanallah. And he says, then I heard some of his words and from amongst the first words that were uttered by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which were heard by Abdullah ibn Salam, something, subhanallah, ayyuhan nas, afshu salama wa at'imu ta'ama wa silu al-arhama wa sallu bil layli wa nasu niyam tadkhulu jannata rabbikum bi salam. If you notice the rhyming of it, obviously this is one of the narrations of the hadith. There are other wordings, but quite similar in meaning. O oh people, spread the salam and the peace live peacefully the salam it has a very deep meaning it doesn't just mean uh, peace be upon you as in just a greeting empty of any thought but it actually means peace be upon you from any harm from me i won't harm you so peace be upon you so when we say assalamu alaikum we mean i'm not going to harm you peace be upon you not only from me but from all the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may you be at total peace imagine a dua we are praying whenever we meet one another for one another what greater greeting can there be may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who don't just shorten such a powerful prayer and who can actually say it properly when we utter it and may Allah accept it from us. So spread this salam and feed the people, feed not only the poor, but feed others and you will find that the hearts come closer. You know, when you feed people, subhanallah, a lot of the times what happens, it is a social event that brings people together. It makes you discuss things. It brings you closer and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us hospitality, to make us hospitable people and to make us appreciative of those who are hospitable towards us. Alhamdulillah. So he says, ta'am, feed even the poor, obviously. How many of us would be ready to invite a wealthy man or a popular man to our homes? What about the poor person who's on your street? Have you ever thought of giving him food? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Wasilul arhama 
and fulfill your relations, fulfill the link and the tie and the rights of your family members and pray at night when everyone is asleep because that is the most sincere. When we pray in everybody's midst, yes, there is sincerity, but perhaps we are worried about this man watching, that man watching. So the sincerity levels might not be that high. But when you are praying at night, when nobody is watching you, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He grant us sincerity in our deeds. Then the hadith ended by saying, if you do that, you will enter the paradise of your Rabb with great ease. You will enter paradise with great ease. Abdullah ibn Salam says he came and he declared his acceptance of the shahada. He declared that this man is indeed a messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know the story I made mention of where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he found that this man was one of the leaders of the Jewish tribes, he told him, what about your people? He said, my people will not accept. They said, no, let us call them. So the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him to go behind a wall, call the people and asked him, who is this man in your midst? They said, he is a leader, a son of a leader, an honest man, son of an honest man, righteous person, son of a righteous. He is this and that. And they praised him. So then they were told, what if he has accepted Islam? And they said, it is impossible. He won't do that. So then when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa called him from behind the wall and asked him, or in fact, he came out and declared his shahada that I bear witness that Allah is one and you are indeed the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They changed their tune instantly and they said, he is a liar, son of a liar. He was a traitor, son of a traitor. He is a cheat, son of a cheat and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those whom when clear cut signs come in front of us, we still don't surrender. Allahu Akbar. May Allah open our doors. So this was the beauty as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Al-Madinatul Munawwara and Subhanallah, a beautiful day. But everyone wanted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come to his place. Obviously, how did the rest of the Muhajireen enter the homes of the Ansar? How did the rest of the people who made Hijra enter the homes of the people of Madina Munawwara? Very simple, by what is known as Qur'ah, picking lots, which means they would pick the name of the person and that particular name would go to the next Ansari who is waiting in line. So they picked the name. Nobody favored anyone and nobody chose, I will go with him, he will come with me. No, it was picked out and subhanallah, more like lots were drawn for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us exception, meaning may he accept us. Today, if we want to solve a problem, it is also a sunnah way to actually put all your names in the hat and pick out one. There's no harm in that because it would resolve your matter. And it means nobody took anyone's chance, meaning anyone's side. I'm just thinking of something and that made me make a slip of the tongue that sometimes if people want to cheat, they write their name 20 times. So everybody thinks that there's 20 names and they're not realizing there's only one name 20 times. When you pick it out, anyone picks it out, the same name comes. That's the type of cheating people in our time would engage in. But at that time, subhanallah, it was just. Now with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where would he go? So the narrations, there are two narrations. One makes mention of the fact that he had stopped where his camel had stopped. And he asked, whose home is the closest? And Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu says, here's my home and here's its door. So he said, this is where I will stop. The other narration, which is very close in meaning, he, he was off his camel. And as they said, Ya Rasulullah, come to my home, come to my home and so on. He said, let my camel go. It has been instructed and it will stop wherever I should be. So the camel went a little bit and paused and sat down at a specific place. And the closest door was the door of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. So this is how the decision was made. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then went into the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. He had a house which had two floors, meaning it was a double story home. And at that time, the second floor, there was no concrete between the two floors. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had entered the, the base, meaning the, the bottom floor. And Abu Ayyub al-Ansari came with his family. And he says, O oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I cannot allow you to be here on this ground floor. When I am going to be above you, I'm going to be above you. I can't allow that to happen. You need to go above us. 
Because as it is, you are higher. It is a sign of respect. We would like to be below. You be above. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, No, I would prefer to be below because people would come to meet me and it would be better for the family members instead of people coming past the women and everyone as they come up to see me, rather I be at the bottom and you can be at the top without any interference. And it is reported that they were so well behaved, meaning the children and the family, they were all so well behaved that they did not want to walk in a way that would disturb Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Not only that, it is reported that one of the uh, urns that were holding water happened to fall and break there on the top floor. And immediately they got up and they tried to wipe it out so fast because they didn't want the water to trickle down and to harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So this narration is also made mention of in the books of hadith as well as in the books of history and seerah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who can respect this, the level of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and at the same time, respect the level of the ulama because al ulama warathatul anbiya. The ulama are those who have inherited from the anbiya. They will have knowledge, sound knowledge. They will teach and they will relay the message of the messengers. And the treatment that people give the scholars of Islam will be similar to the treatment that people gave the messengers because the message is one. And this is why you find societies break up into exactly the same groups of people you have hypocrites you have people who will support the ulama you have people who will go down in history as those who crumbled communities because they fought the ulama and so on may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us die in a condition that we are on the right side remember not every time should things happen the way you want them to happen. They should always happen the way Allah and His Rasul want them to happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allahu Akbar. So this was the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu anhu. Beautiful place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed. Introducing the One Islam TV app. The ultimate destination to learn about Islam with hundreds of educational videos, lessons and documentaries. Experience our YouTube channels in one place. All content is music free. Download the One Islam TV app now from the Apple or Google Play Store today.